Hi and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me again. This is going to be a gear video. Uh, it's been a long time since I've made one of these, so I'm going to talk about the lenses I own and use for aviation photography. I've actually spent a fair amount of time and research, not to mention money, on finally coming down to this selection of lenses that I'm going to talk about. I've upgraded some lenses along the way. Some have been great and some have been disappointing, but this is my current aviation kit as of 2023 and I'm happy to say that it works really well for me. Now, I'm not suggesting that this kit is the ultimate kit by any means, but it's a realistic and reasonably affordable high quality set of lenses which get the job done, uh, giving me access to really good quality images to work with. Now, it's important to remember here that I've previously been a studio portrait photographer, but I am now both exclusively uh, an aviation and landscape photographer. So one of my choices here might surprise you. So in fact, let's tackle that one right now. Personally, I think for an aviation photographer, there are two sweet spots in terms of focal length to hit. 400 millimeters and 600 millimeters. Now, you could do this with a super zoom uh, and cover both. Something like one of the 150 to 600 super zooms from Tamron or Sigma will do it. Now I've tried this and my results turned out to be incredibly inconsistent. But to keep it brief for this video, I've decided certainly at the point of recording this to limit my choices to not include third party lenses anymore. I reserve the right to change my mind in the future, but for now, I'm a Canon shooter, so I have decided to use only Canon lenses. As a portrait and landscape photographer, I already had this the 70 to 200 f 2.8 mark ii from when i bought it new about 12 years ago i think it's a stonkingly good awesome lens and there's no way i'm getting rid of this lens because i also frequently use it for my landscape photography so for shooting aircraft at close range or for big aircraft or for aircraft on a gloomy day with fairly low light this lens with a fast f 2.8 aperture is a really useful one to have in my kit which brings me on to the issue of what to do about a 400 millimeter zoom well because this 70 to 200 is optically so good a number of years ago i decided to test it out with a 2x extender and I was really impressed with my test shots. I even made a video about it, so check that video out here. The extender turns the lens into a 140 to 400 f5.6 for relatively little cost. So why would I need to get one of the hugely popular and highly regarded Canon uh, 100 to 400 Mark IIs? Uh, some review sources have even compared the two lenses and although the extender combo seems to lose a little in contrast, which can be easily corrected in post, many have even commented that the 70-200 with an extender is actually a touch sharper at 400mm. Uh, the 100-400 also appears to zoom somewhat short of 400 by comparison it's actually something more like 370 to 380 millimeters. So that's why I haven't replaced my 70 to 200 with a 100 to 400, and I've simply just added a 2X extender. Uh, lots of people say that an extender degrades the image quality substantially, but I have to say that in my tests, I've proved to myself that provided you start with an incredibly good pro-grade lens, the results are still really impressive. Now, speaking of the 400mm focal length, after much thought and research, 
not to mention huge amounts of frustration with my Tamron G2, I decided to pick up a used 400mm prime from MPB. And it was a sort of stopgap. So I've also got this Canon 400 f5.6 L series lens. It's not an image stabilized lens like the 70 to 200 extender combo, but what a beautiful lens this is. The contrast, sharpness, and quality of the images this produces just blows me away every time I use it. I honestly think, I honestly think this lens is one of the best kept secrets in aviation photography. It must be the bargain of the century. There are loads of these around in good condition on the secondhand market. The image quality is incredible. The build quality is superb. I mean, it's Canon L series glass after all, and it's lightweight. It weighs in at just 1200 grams. Okay, it's a 30 odd year old design. Uh, mine was actually made in 2014, but you get all of this for about five or 600 pounds for a used copy in good to excellent condition. Yes, it's not a zoom, but this is a stunning lens for a bargain price and personally I will take this over a third party super zoom any day so if you're just starting out in taking photos of aircraft you should seriously give this lens some consideration. So you might now think that I've doubled up a bit here and, and you're right but in some cases I shoot with two cameras so the ability to have my 400 prime on one camera and my 70 to 200 on the other camera is a really good flexible option for me. There is a perfectly valid argument that I don't need the 400 prime, but because I think the lens is so good and the flexibility it gives to allow me to shoot with two cameras means that it's a, a very useful and worthwhile piece of equipment for me to have in my kit. So let's now move on to the other sweet focal length. Now, I think 600 millimeters for shooting aircraft is a huge challenge. Uh, 600 millimeters is where you really want to be for shooting high speed single jets at air shows. But that focal length is a huge challenge for aviation photography because you're actually asking for quite a lot. You want a reasonably fast lens that lets in enough light so the camera can still autofocus and shoot images while not using a stupidly high ISO. You want a light enough lens to handhold for long periods of time and one that manages to focus reasonably quickly. And presumably you don't want this lens to cost the earth either. Now to put it into perspective, a 600mm f4 lens from Canon currently retails at between 11 and 13 and a half thousand pounds depending on which version you get. So this is where the super zoom might come in. It's affordable, it has a big zoom range up to 600mm and gives a lot of flexibility. But the downsides are the slower f6.3 aperture which may degrade autofocus functions depending on your camera. And you'll probably get a somewhat compromised image quality and sharpness. As I mentioned, I tried the Tamron G2 and ended up having serious issues. So I've gone with something else. Now, because I was so impressed with the performance of my 70 to 200 uh, with an extender, and my 400 mm prime i've decided to pair that 2x extender up with this uh, it's a canon uh, 300 mm f 2.8 is usm now it's an old lens now uh, i've actually not had it very long but the lens itself is a 24 odd year old design it lets in a lot of light and it's super sharp some even say it's one of the best lenses Canon, Canon has ever made. So pairing this with the extender gives me the 600mm f5.6 image stabilised lens which produces lovely sharp images at 600mm, leagues ahead of what I used previously. Yes, it's perhaps on the heavier side, 
Uh, Super Zoom is typically around uh, just over two kilos, but this is nearer to something like three kilos. So what I'm giving up in terms of flexibility of having a zoom and having a lightweight lens, I think I'm gaining in image quality. Uh, having said that, I'm also gaining an incredibly sharp f2.8 300 millimeter lens uh, for those dull overcast days with low light and also a stunning lens for shooting larger aircraft or if I'm a bit closer to the action. So they are what I call my big lenses for aviation photography. I might also break out either of my landscape lenses for air show uh, static walkabouts or wide angle shots whenever I may need them. So I have a 24 to 105 and I also have a 17 to 40 lens and I will use either of these for those types of shots and situations. So they're the lenses I've, sh I've chosen to use for aviation photography and I'm very happy with my choices. Um, Aviation photography is a challenging subject, so there's no right or wrong answer. It's just a question of finding and settling on a lens or selection of lenses that gives you the results you want for your budget. I hope you found that useful. Uh, please help this channel out and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell for more aviation and landscape photography videos in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.